Hey, this is Derek with U of M Tiger.com back for another video. Today I'm going to do a quick one with um, showing how the M1 or M2 iPad work with an external display. I'm running the new iOS 16 beta that has this ability. And so without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it. So you can see here I've got the iPad and an external display. This is just an inexpensive 1080p display, but you can use pretty much any display you want. I'm only connecting it with one cable. So like if I'm going on a trip and I want to have multiple displays, I can take this, fold it down, it has this little kickstand, fold it down and put it in my backpack and then put this in my backpack with this one cable and have the ability to run a separate display. Uh, there's a lot of upsides to using two displays, which uh, is the reason I use them in my daily job, the reason I use them at home, and that's the ability to have things running on your main display and also have the ability to run something separate over on this display. So if I wanted to have, uh, let's say, music or something like that up, I can, uh, let's say I want to minimize this. I can bring up music, have that running. I can bring this over as a separate window. So the uh, setup here will let you bring in four windows. One thing to be aware of um, right out of the gate is if you're using a multi-system like this, the iPad will sometimes uh, set to mirror. So you'll see the exact same thing here. Um, you'll just have to go into settings and display and change it to go into arrangement and change it to extend displays from the mirror displays. So once you have an extended display, you can connect pretty much any display and it's gonna fill the screen for you. Uh, so the one thing that it will do also is it's gonna just by default use the uh, audio of whatever the external display has. So right now I have it connected and it's using the audio speakers of this particular display, which are pretty bad, but you can connect, go to um, Apple Music or something like that and let's say you want to uh, change the audio in this case i can go to living room nightstand den family hallway these are all apple devices apple airplay devices that so i can switch the audio to a much better so let's say i want to switch to office or multiple speakers even, it gives you the ability to do that. And so when I hit play, now it's coming out of my main speakers. So you have the ability to also, you don't have to use the external display for your audio. You can set it to Bluetooth or um, an Apple TV or something like that, which is what I've done here or any AirPlay system. So you have, still have that versatility. I've seen some reviews where they said you have to use the external display speakers. That's not the case here. But like if you don't have any other speakers, obviously that's where it's gonna come out of rather than the iPad. And some people are like, the iPad has better audio and I agree, the iPad should be a choice, but it's not at this, at, at this juncture. So anyway, this is my first kind of on the road or in the kitchen outside by the pool setup if I wanna get work done. Uh, this gives me a little bit better widescreen display for like if I wanna put Excel or something on here or watch a movie. Um, let me see if I can pull up a movie real quick here. So in this here, I've launched um, iTunes and I've got Minions showing. And one thing I did notice that if you do use the Apple TV as your audio, it will also send the video to it like it would normally do. Uh, there may be a way around that, but in this particular test, I'm just gonna show you how it works using these speakers, which is probably how you're gonna use it on the road. You're either gonna use the speakers of the display or you're going to use some uh, wireless headphones uh, you could obviously put a dock on this and actually get, you know, something with a headphone port. I don't believe this iPad has a headphone port. Um, yeah, this version of the iPad does not have a headphone port, so you could just uh, use your your AirPods or whatever. Um, so let's just show how this what this looks like. So as you can see, that's a really nice, convenient way to get multiple displays to use with your iPad. You could have things running on your iPad or over here, um, really increase your workflow if you're using it for work or even just your media output. You could have email and Twitter over here. 
have your uh, whatever notes app and the Safari over here or have Safari in your notes app so you can copy in and out. Um, so you're not compressed inside the actual iPad display. So before I jump ahead, I want to show you what happens in mirror mode. Uh, Cause this would be also a useful mode. So let's say you want to edit a file on your iPad, but you want to see what it looks like on a bigger screen. You can, uh, I'm just got to distort pencil here just to kind of give you an idea if you look in this area you can see you can see this on the bigger screen uh, which obviously this is an edit I would make but it just gives you an idea you as you're fine-tuning things to see it on a bigger display could be very useful uh, but I'm not going to use it this way very often but I just wanted to show that in case someone wanted to actually use it in this mode it doesn't fill the entire display but it does give you a bigger screen. So, so as you can see, I have the iPad connected to the Thunderbolt port of the Samsung display. I'm using the keyboard and mouse that I, via continuity with my Mac Mini. And this gives you the ability to watch movies on here. Uh, like I said before, it's going to use the external display unless you have like AirPlay devices you could send the audio to. The um, you can move this to your iPad if you want. Uh, if I want to go here, I can turn it on. So you have the a lot of abilities here, and you can see how good it looks on the main display. The uh, this is one of the benefits of having the iPad connect directly to an external display is it kind of supersedes the need for a Apple TV in some situations. Like if you just have a TV back in your bedroom that you use on occasion and you're sick or something and you want to watch a movie, you can connect it and be up and running assuming you have a dock connector that will connect to your HDMI port. I will show you how that works in a moment, but um, as you can see, with also with just this, this display, it just gives you so many more options for, um, let's say you want to edit a photo or something like that, you could go to your uh, photo apps or one of your photo apps, I'm just going to pull up photos here, and you can see this gives me a really large uh, screen to go in here and edit the way I like. Uh, let's say I want to enter full screen mode, go to the edit module. And, and instead of having like a few where you have to scroll back and forth on your iPad, you've got the entire menu of uh, adjustments that you can make right here. So let's say I want to go here and adjust contrast. You can see how that, you can just have it right here at your fingertips. You could make this larger if you want and then make the adjustments. So let's say if you want to zoom in on an area, you have the ability to do that. So I find this really convenient and very helpful if you want to edit a specific area of a photo or at least see how those adjustments are going to show. Uh, you can also use other um, like Lightroom. I have Lightroom on here as well. So that's it's good with Lightroom if you want to, um, let's say you want to go and uh, flag your photos or something like that in Lightroom, or even just even if you're not just using them for adjustments, the ability to move quickly through the catalog uh, is also very beneficial. So I can enter full screen here, go back to the catalog, and you can see you've just got tons and tons of photos here that you can go through and. Uh, like edit quickly, see if any of them, you know, you want to keep any of them or not. So you've got this kind of uh, just quick ability to go through and mark your photos if that's what you want to do. The uh, So that's, you have this kind of, I guess you could say, ability to even just have multiple things up. So let's say I want to have launch Safari, I want to have photos on the screen, some sort of note app. Uh, I could go to, uh, let's say here, I want to bring up my music or I want to uh, read some magazine. So even the magazines you can zoom in, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, and then if you want to switch back and forth, you just, it's just a gesture on your, um, in this case, I'm using an old school, um, I think they're called trackpad, magic trackpad or something like that. Oh, one of the things I want to mention about this particular setup, I'm going to move this over to another setup, 
But one of the things good about having it on your desk like this, as opposed to having it off on a stand, is you can use Face ID. Um, the Face ID actually needs to use the camera that's in the iPad. So that's going to be an issue uh, if unless you just want to type in your password, which is not a problem for me. So real quickly, um, for this next setup, I'm going to use a dock that uses um, HDMI, USB. Um, this is for power, it's USB-C. The, uh, and then it has an SD card, and I think this is a micro SD, but I'm not positive I don't use that. I just use the SD card with my Sony camera. So now you can see I have this connected to the Sataki, however you spell it, Satechi or Sataki um, stand, and I have HDMI connected to it, and it's running into through a Denon receiver, which is over here, and it's using audio out via USB so uh, I have that feeding a D10 DAC uh, so this is gives me the ability to listen to high resolution audio that feeds a headphone amp so I have the ability to listen to my AKG K701 headphones or I can that feeds into the receiver via analog and gives me the ability to play it on my NHT SB2 speakers. So this kind of gives me a little flexibility and lets me take full advantage of Apple Music's high resolution audio. So one of the features I like to use with this setup is on my iPhone, it's through the um, accessibility features. And this gives you the ability to connect to the iPad and control the pause play. So if I want to hit play, pause, you can see that it allows you to do that. You can go to free previous tracks. Now volume up and down work on some devices, not on the D10. Um, I can control Siri. So let's say I want to have uh, the voice assistant pop up. I just hit the button. Play music by the Beatles. So it, you can see it allows you to um, get Siri up and running. So to wrap things up real quick, uh, as you can see, this works with a lot of different uh, environments. So if you want to use it for Excel, you can do that. You want to use it for editing photos on a bigger screen. You have that ability watching uh, iTunes videos. I didn't test a lot of other media, so maybe it's not possible with other media. I did test it with iTunes. You can see it played fine. I've got... So this is just going to get this iPad even closer to being uh, a MacBook replacement and maybe a total replacement for some people that want to, you know, that don't want multiple devices, but also want to have pen, pen input, which is one thing the iPad has that the MacBook doesn't. Until I, the MacBook comes out with a touch version, there are going to be people that are going to want to stick with the iPad and this gives you more flexibility with the iPad. Uh, I really like it. It's not a complete, uh, PC or Mac uh, update for me, and, and I'll still need those uh, platforms, but it is something that gives me a lot more flexibility on what I can do either at home or on the road. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.